Hey Missoula, it's Shanti with Mountain Lion. I'm here with video two in our clean air video series. 12 out of our 29 buses are electric, which is 40% of our fleet. So today we wanna to talk all about charging our electric buses. What does it take to charge a bus? How long does a bus run on a charge, especially on a winter day like today? Does it cost more or less to operate an electric bus versus a diesel bus? We'll answer all of your FAQs and more in this video. And we're gonna go behind the scenes. So everything we do that's not actively on the road takes place in this building behind me, which is quite small. We've been here since the 80s and we are definitely out of space, as you will see later in our tour. And we're in need of a new home. Um, but let's get back to charging infrastructure and let's start our tour right outside where it all begins, where the energy enters our building. So behind me, this green box is one of the transformers that Northwestern Energy helped us install to make sure that we can pull enough electricity from the grid to charge our electric buses. They take quite a bit to charge. The electricity travels from here, up these silver pathways, into our bus garage, to these larger converters. We started with six electric buses in 2019. At that time, we needed an individual converter for each charging station and each bus. So we had six buses, and here are our original six converters. Our new buses and charging infrastructure, which arrived this winter, are more efficient, as you would expect as battery technology evolves. We're able to put smaller converters on the ceiling now to open up new charging stations with one converter serving multiple buses. The converters take the power from the transformer outside and convert it into the current needed to charge our buses. That current is then delivered into a charging box that has a handle that plugs into the side of our bus. When we plug it in, the light goes from white to blue to signify it's charging. You can see on the bus's dashboard where the battery level is, much like you can see when charging your cell phone. This is where we park all of our vehicles. I'm filming during peak service time when most of our vehicles are on the road, so it's quieter and more empty than usual. Our facility is so full at night that not only is our bus garage full, but we're using the space inside of our bus flash and behind our garage to park our paratransit vehicles, like our cutaways and our vans. We're definitely in need of a new home. And this not only impacts where we park our vehicles, but it's actually impacting our conversion to a zero tailpipe mission fleet. Because electric buses need to be parked next to a charger, we're actually at our limit in this current space for adding any more electric vehicles into our fleet. We literally do not have any more space to add chargers. In fact, we even have to park some of our electric buses in our maintenance bay to charge overnight, which doesn't always work well for our maintenance team when they have other vehicles in service. But we are making do while we search for a new home. So now let's tackle some of your frequently asked questions, starting with how long does it actually take to charge one of our electric buses? If a bus is truly on empty, it can take up to five hours to fully charge, depending on the battery capacity and which charger it's hooked up to. But like most of us with our cell phones, we usually don't let it go all the way to empty before plugging it in to charge. We wanna make sure our buses are always at full capacity and ready to go. For the next question, how long can an electric bus run off of one charge? On a perfect day when it's not too hot and not too cold, an electric bus can run from eight to 10 hours off of a single charge. On a day like today when it's freezing out and the road conditions are not ideal and the heater is cranked, we're gonna be bringing our electric buses in about every four hours to make sure that there are no dead batteries on the road. And conversely, in the summertime, when it's hot out and the AC is blasting, we're bringing them in about every five to seven hours to recharge. On to the next question. Mountain Lion says it's committed to a zero tailpipe emissions fleet by 2035, but aren't there still emissions associated with charging electric buses? Yes, there are. We charge our buses from a mixed energy grid. As of this recording, our electricity provider, which is Northwestern Energy, reports that 65% of the energy it generates comes from renewable resources and is carbon free, but that still leaves 35% coming from fossil fuel. At Mountain Line, it's important to us to do the best we can with what we have. Operating battery electric buses is the most sustainable option available to us right now. Our new electric buses help decrease particulate matter that's being released into our local airshed, which is decreasing our overall carbon footprint and also helping to keep our valley air clean. Okay, next question. So why don't we just use solar panels to charge our electric buses? Well, it takes a lot of energy to charge our electric buses and to offset that energy demand with solar panels takes more resources and space than we have available to us right now. Okay, next question. So why don't we have other low or no emission buses in our fleet like hydrogen fuel cell or natural gas buses? 
Well, we're fortunate to live in a state that has lots of open land and few people. That's why most of us are here. But that also means that we have fewer resources than larger, more densely populated areas. The limiting factor for mountain lion is that we actually don't have the proper fueling infrastructure to try out these new types of buses in our area. Right now, the most viable option for us is battery electric. Okay, on to our final question for at least this video. Is operating an electric bus more affordable than operating a diesel bus? And that is a complicated question and answer because we have to look at a couple of different things. We have to look at short-term things like variable fuel costs, and we have to look at long-term things like overall community health and air quality. When looking at the short-term, it can actually be comparable or more to operate an electric bus over a diesel bus. When we plug one of our electric buses in, we pull a lot of power from the grid. And the largest cost associated with charging our buses is actually a demand rate charge, which is a charge that is applied every time we demand a lot of energy from the grid. Outside of the demand rate charge, it can actually be more affordable for us mile to mile to charge an electric bus than fuel a diesel bus. Looking at the long term, we sincerely believe that our commitment and transition to a zero tailpipe emissions fleet benefits all of us now and in the future. And we're excited to see what the future holds. Thank you so much for tuning in today to learn more about our electric buses. I'm sure there are many more questions than we were able to fit into today's video. Feel free to put questions in the comments or to email us at any time with more of your questions. You can find a contact us form at mountainline.com. Take care.